do today. Um, we're going to be one cameraman shy for just a little bit, so bear with us if we have any problems. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, hi, and I cannot see everybody listed at the moment. Um, so, hi Thelma, hi Irene, hi Net. Um, and if there are others that I haven't said, um, we'll catch you in just a little while. <laughs> So, nothing like waiting until the last second. I literally set up the cameras, he ran in, he started it for me, and off we go. So, let's see what we've got going on. Hi, Daria. Um, actually, I guess I need to switch over the cameras. So bear with me for just a second. I'm a one-man show today. never know what you are going to get, huh? Hi, Mary R. How are you? Ah. Well, little Miss Emma is home sick with a fever today, so I have been masking it up here at the store, so, or I should say in the classroom. So hopefully it's just a regular cold and nothing more of it. We'll take a test probably tomorrow. Um, so keep your fingers crossed. Think of us while we uh, have a little one that is sick. So if you are watching, Emma, hi. I know you wanted to do the kitties with me, but um, I'm sorry, sweetie, that you're not feeling good. Okay, so with that, we are going to be making our easel card. Then I can't seem to get it to set. Then it's upside down for me. There's our easel. We have an A6 and this is a slight version of a 5 by 7 it's not quite a 5 by 7 because we cut it out of the frame so we wanted to make sure or I should say so I wanted to make sure that it would fit yes I at this point I am alone <laughs> so uh, we'll just We'll have a lot of fun, won't we? <laughs> and it's okay, because I can, I think that I can do both. You just might have to see me hop up and down every once in a while. But I think we're good. I don't think we need any close-ups, so hopefully we'll be okay. Um, and then this is our other 5 by 7 So we get four cards out of a Deco large kit, which is pretty good. Um, so let's take a look at what's in your kit today. Alrighty, so we have our deco page, our other third portion of the sheet that's the full picture. There's a blue piece in there, and there is a velveteen and bubble gum. And then we've got this neat pink. Um, if you decide that you like this pink that's on the back side instead, you are more than welcome to use it. There is enough of it. Um, but I really like that print with this. So um, I'm going to keep it the way that I did it first time around. We've got some silver. And let's see. I know that we have some foamies, the cards that I showed you. Uh, some thank you stickers, some, or thinking of you stickers, excuse me. And then inside you're gonna get one of these little fancy butterflies. Um, I have two here beside me. It's to help fill in that little watering can on the double easel card. So here are our foamies. Ribbons. Look, we're just going to take it all out right now. Ribbons, send that on its way. We also have our cardstock sheet that comes with our, nope, wrong way, paper goods. Uh, DL in silver, our three pieces of ribbon, and then our cards. So I think that that's every 
thing that we're going to need. Um, oh, dear. Is there possibly that it needs to be set up louder from over there? Can't, huh? Okay. Well, let me see what I can do, guys. I will do the best that I can. Can you hear me okay? This could be fun. I have somebody back as cameraman, so that helps. <laughs> Does that help at all? Hi, Diane. You know, I talk quietly. Just remind me if I'm starting to talk quieter again because I tend to do that after a while. Um, and hopefully we can get the show on the road. So first thing that I'm going to have you guys do is punch out your silver piece out of here. I should say the whole picture out of here because we're going to use our silver piece um, for our DL. Um, we're actually just using it to make a little bit of a bigger version of this shape that's on the end. I should say a little bit smaller of the shape that's on the inside. So um, you just want to take, and after you've popped out that picture, take your DL sheet of silver mirroring and I moved it just a tiny bit from the top edge, and then I moved it just a, I moved it back up and did a tiny here. So I have already pre-done mine, um, but basically you're just taking and moving it about maybe an eighth of an inch down past the frame where it starts and the paper starts. Let me get this out of the way. Make sure you guys can see it okay. Okay, so here you can see that it isn't quite to the frame. The frame is still on the table. So I took my silver mirroring and I moved it up about an eighth of an inch from the top. And then I made a line. And then I slid it. I gave it a little bit more down here. I think I'm actually going to come back and make it just a little bit bigger because I think that this is too small in reflection. So that's the great thing with doing it on the back side. Nope, don't want to do it with that. Um, was it in here somewhere? I missed it. Okay. I think I'm just going to slide it down just a tad, give it a little bit more space. And you can't, unless you slide up onto this, you're not going to mark it. So don't be afraid to do it that way. You can also turn it upside down if you're nervous um, and you want to do it on the back side of this instead of on the front. And that's okay too. Can you guys hear okay? They're saying no. Oh, um. <laughs> Possibly one poor glue plug, maybe? the mic we plugged it back in I restarted the computers earlier today hoping that that would fix it so can you guys hear me <laughs> I can't hear you a lot doesn't work in my body but my ears are good and the TV's on 40 okay um, yeah I know she had problems last night too uh, let's see is this loud enough for me to for you to be able to hear me? Hmm. Well, um, can you hear me okay? Irene says yes. 
Maybe we fixed it with the unplug and replug. Can you guys hear me okay without me yelling? <laughs> I'm going to. Back to my regular voice. Is that loud enough? fiddling with the sound right now. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, have to turn it all the way up on YouTube. Um, okay, so guys, those of you that are having trouble hearing, if we can just, instead of turning up your TV, try actually turning up your YouTube volume and then your TV. So hopefully that will work. Sometimes if YouTube goes through the TV, then um, sometimes there should be a little space for you to be able to turn up the volume inside YouTube. So hopefully that will fix it. Um, but at least you guys can hear a little bit better than before. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with this piece just because... That's what I just had in my hot little hand. Okay, and we're just cutting it while we follow that line. And it does not have to be, I mean, yes, you should follow your line and try and stay without being shaky, but still. really big scissors. Should we be cutting this? And see. Let's make sure. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to problem solve as I go. Hi, Martha. Everything is turned up, YouTube, my speakers, and my computer, and still not hearing them. Um, okay, I will talk as loud as I can for those of you that are having trouble hearing. Um, and for those of you that aren't, just be aware that I'm talking a little bit louder than I normally would. <laughs> Uh, okay, so hopefully this helps. So I'm just going around and I'm cutting the shape to the frame piece. We're going to make the little bubblegum velveteen card first. So this is the card that we're working on right now. That one. Has, who has the opportunity to follow along with me? I know that we got this kit out early enough that hopefully some of you have this. Good night, Daria. <sighs> okay, I will do the best that I can feel better, Daria. Yeah, we thought that it might be the microphone. We've unplugged it and replugged it in. Um, shouldn't be about the speaker. We can't hit like a volume on the microphone because that's the other microphone. That's the internal microphone there, right? Um, okay. Well, Bryce is going to keep working on it, and hopefully we can uh, we can get it to the point where you guys can hear. And I apologize for it not being loud enough. Okay. 
we thought for a little bit that it was going to be something wrong with the internet because we were having troubles with the internet. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here is, is that I'm going to cut off a little bit off of each of the edges because, and when I say a little bit, it's maybe an eighth of an inch. So don't cut off too much. Just cut off just a little tiny bit on each side of your frame. We just want to make sure that it's going to fit in here and still show some bubble gum around the edges. Okay? So, from here, we're going to pop off this border, and again, we're doing the same types of things with this deco large as we did with the last, and that is, is make sure that you salvage the, the frame. snug in there today. Okay. We'll also need the border with the blue butterflies. And I'm just cutting the tip and the tip. I like putting the tape on the back of these little borders instead of on the silver because then I can guarantee that I'm getting it where I want it and I'm not ending up with stickum that's going to stick out on the sides. So I put the tape on the back and I'm just cutting it even so then that way they're both even on each side. So I just folded it in half just to be able to make sure that I got it as even as I could. And now I'm going to take them and you can choose which angle you want them to go at. Your butterflies can come in or your butterflies can be leaving. It's totally up to you. And of course that happens. I think that Bryce might have possibly have found what was wrong. Uh, so hopefully, can you guys hear a little bit better now? Possibly? Definitely feeling like the Sprint commercials, Verizon commercials. He, he went to Sprint. Did you notice that? When the commercials that you're seeing now are for the Sprint, which is kind of funny in all of, of itself. Okay, so I've made sure that... Yes to Bryce. Sorry, <laughs> What did you figure out? <laughs> when you do the up button or the volume up button, uh -huh. there was a little tiny number that has and up there down there it says four percent. Oh, how funny. And there's a little slider bar, but when it's down that low, you can't see the slider bar. You just have to click and drag and when I clicked and dragged it went up to 73 percent 
I could go higher. Could I louder. no, I I think that we'll be okay. <laughs> Hopefully that will help and it will stay that way. Nobody touch it. Okay. Hi, Sharon. Uh, let's see. And I possibly missed some other people when we first signed in. So I apologize if we are. Okay. So we are going to go back and cut our frame down. We are not having to salvage any of the silver, so we just want to get the silver off as much as possible off the edge so that we have our frame. Can you guys hear me okay? with the mic being moved back. Good. Okay, notice I'm cutting it with the frame still in its thicker pieces at the top and the bottom. That's just to give it a little bit more stability. And then I'm cutting off the other side just a tiny bit to even out that frame so it's similar in width size. Okie dokie. And then now that we have that, we do not need this the inside corners, they'll be for another card. So we'll just set these off to the side. And we're just gonna cut off the top and the bottom. Try and stick as close to that silver border as possible. And I know that I've said that if you like having that silver piece on there at the bottom and on the side, that is absolutely fine. It's totally up to you. And on the top here, just make sure that you miss the sign when you're making that decision of where to cut. Because there's been a couple times where I've decided to cut too high and have to cut twice. So... Just remember that piece. So you should have a section. Let's get the other corners out. This one was nice and um, it's hard to get the pieces out of this one. I don't know why. <laughs> oh well. They made sure that they were going to keep all the pieces together. Okay. So I'm going to set this border piece up with my corners. And I'm also going to set this piece up in the corner so I don't accidentally try and put it on this card because that could happen. Um, Okay, so we need to build up our little decoupage piece. We'll need a bubblegum velveteen for this card. We'll need a five by seven. A deco page. Five by seven. Okay. I think that's all the pieces that we need. 
Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to build it up on the silver piece. And this one has the jar from the cardstock. So let me go back and grab this one. So it's this with the cardstock. It's an empty section of blue that I used um, after I was done uh, cutting from where I was at earlier with all the other ones. So we're going to kind of take this one and give it a shot, shall we? Okay, those those so I need that corner so basically anywhere over in here should be fine for cutting I know that I'm wanting a piece that's just a little bit smaller than this one I'm going to come in on each side just a little bit. I think that I had it listed at four and a half. Close up my other corner. I want to make sure that I don't, I'm sorry guys, I want to backtrack here for just a moment. I'm just going to go ahead and cut off four and a half inches off of this because it needs to go right here on our other five by seven. So I want to make sure that I'm not cutting into blue that I need for something else. So four and a half inches. Give it a little bit extra, just in case. Yeah. So I'm gonna set that off to the side for my four and a half, and now I know that I've got plenty of blue right through here that I can use. I also know that this is gonna be my A6, so I can cut that at the same time. And then we'll have our blue piece, and I won't be guessing. <laughs> okay, so it looks like three inches is the width that we need for that blue. how high we're going to need. Just a little bit. All in the blue. Okay. That should be the right amount. Okay, so we have a piece that we just cut out of the middle that's three inches even. And now we just want to give it kind of the same little bits of shape at the top and the bottom here. So we're gonna take it, flip it over, and we're gonna make that same Shape again, we're going to move down a little bit from the top 
And now we just have a little tiny bit to work with. And then we're going to go up a little bit from the bottom. So almost back up to the top of the frame. Okay. So we have our border piece with our silver, and now we're cutting this out with our blue. That three inches by six and a quarter. Yeah, six and a quarter. And same shape, we're just going to replicate it. So then it follows through and it actually looks like this was made just specially for us that we punched out. Okay. So do we have too many pretty papers, making cards for our Christmas and birthday exchange. <laughs> our clothes are hideous. <laughs> I am walking into a conversation that I, I am possibly misinterpreting. <laughs> So I took our foamies, <clears throat> excuse me, and I built it up on the blue so that it stepped up and away from our silver. So make sure that you can see where I'm at here. So I'm just taking and I'm going to put it up above so that it doesn't look just one dimensional. It works really nice with the Miri. <clears throat> Found a dress of Target, made it look like it was made from a flower sack. <laughs> I haven't gone, well, I haven't gone clothes shopping in two years. Um, not completely true because I've had to go clothes shopping uh, online and the only place that I seem to be able to trust their sizes and I'm not having to return them and reorder them in a different size has been Old Navy. So Old Navy is been my choice this last few years. And they always get you on a sale of some sort or another. Yeah. You can't pass up those jeans when they're 30% off, you know. You know, there is a place here in town in an antique store where they actually have taken the old flower sacks and making... Um, young children's like infant dresses and things with them with old lace that that they found and i'm not sure if the lace is old doilies or <laughs> what but it sure does look pretty by the time that she's done with them add a couple satin bows go figure Okay, Margie, remember, not as many foamies because they take forever for me to peel off. <laughs> you would think that after doing this for the last month and a week, is it a month and a week? Every Thursday? Maybe. So you would think that I would start remembering not as many foamies. <laughs> It is. Oh, 
Okay. So I'm just putting it right around the edge. I want to take just a little tiny bit off of this. And big scissors are not cutting it. I mean, it could cut it, but it's not cutting it for me. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, there we go. So there's our base. And now we are going to punch out one of the jars. One of the jars that looks like it has a little bit more of the flower. Let's see. I've got a drop. Got a drop there. I've got a drop there. Okay. So I believe that it's this one. I actually just want to make sure that I'm not taking it from one. They all have the little piece. Okay. I think this one, yep. This one is the other one. At least last time around, I ended up with using all the pieces. Um, the first deco large set that I did by the time that all was said and done I think I had enough to pretty much make another card because <laughs> I I was so tentative about which ones I was going to use all right so you want to pop go ahead and pop out the um, go ahead and pop out the white pieces that are in them because we want to let the background. It's just a pale light blue, but it still makes it seem more like, I don't know, backdrop, window, sky, something. <clears throat> okay, so I glued this first one on because I raised the background. I don't want to make it so thick that this becomes hard to put in the mail. So for this, I'm gluing it on. And that way I can slide them around to where I want them to be. I think I'm going to put him right in there. Perfect height. And then this one is our second one. Reminder, don't use so many foamies. <laughs> I, I think I just have to say that out loud each time. Let's see if it works. <laughs> And I think anyone that does this type of uh, 
this type of work of doing cards and things like that, I think we all have a paper problem. I, I didn't do cards for the longest time. We kind of talked about that a little bit last week. Um, I got involved because of my dad's birthday with the Cricut maker. And then from there, it just seemed like it went downhill. But I already, <laughs> but I already had a paper problem. I just would walk by in Joanne's and see a piece of paper and went, oh, that's really pretty. I think I'll save it for something. I don't know what, but I'll save it for something. And uh, they're the ones that are hardest to part with when you do that. I still have one that I think that I got the, um, I had gone to Pocatello, Idaho for my grandma's funeral and we were trying to set up a few different things. Um, and this was a long time ago. Um, I, I think that my cousin's daughter is 13. I could be wrong, but 13 years ago when she passed, when my grandma passed away, she was a little, little tiny baby, like a month old that we drove from uh, Washington down to Pocatello, Idaho. And, um, <clears throat> and I still have that piece of paper <laughs> that I bought that I picked up that I thought was just so pretty. It wasn't funeral oriented. It wasn't, but I saw it while I was there and I liked it and I got it. So it just kind of happens. I think when you enjoy paper, <laughs> any type of paper is fine. Um, and then I use this little guy. So one, two, and then this one. One for me. Say hi to Pam. Hi Pam. Hi Glenn. Ah, uh, that's okay. We had a we had a sound thing to fix. So we've got that done and out of the way now. So glad that you could join us. Oh, Mary R. I like that idea. I don't think that I've caught you saying that before. It must be a conversation for a different, for maybe the weekend class, because I haven't heard it. I like that. That is a very good idea. Okay, so here is our deco built up. We've got a few different layers now. And now I'm gonna take and move this out of my way. I'm gonna take my five by seven. And you do have to trim this down, but um, you have to trim it down for the frame. You may not feel like you want to, and that's quite all right too. So you, we can do it one of two different ways. So you take a look and see what you think. I'll give you guys the option and we'll see what this card does a different way if you wanna do it differently. So there's enough of the bubblegum velveteen, this right here, so soft and so pretty. And as soon as I saw the kitty, um, I knew that I was going to be using some of this. And that's when I bought it last year. So that's what happens when you wait a long enough time because the Springtime Wishes was last year's spring kit, uh, Deco Large kit. Um, and it is just so pretty. No, that did not do what I wanted it to do. Oh. 
wonder if that side of my pink is not straight. Let's try it from this side. It could just be the user error. <laughs> no, it, it it is. It's a little um, it's a little crooked on that side. So. I'm glad that I didn't tape them all down first. a little crazy but good it's always hard going through that escrow process and sometimes they pull these crazy things at the last minute and I remember the first house that James and I bought um, was in Walla Walla Washington and we um, we had gotten paid that Friday that we were going in for escrow and all of a sudden at the very last minute the um, mortgage mortgage company wanted for us to pay off a bill and so we went ahead and we paid off that bill with the paycheck we literally had 10 cents to our name 10 cents for two weeks 10 cents but we were buying the house and we were closing <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna happen <laughs> okay I'm gonna take just because it's the fast and simple way to do this for you guys if you have some of your um, roll tape uh, from your shaker cards from a couple weeks ago you can just run this right along your edges and it makes it go really quick and fast you don't have to put it everywhere, just each side and then give it a little bit of fill up in the in between. I really do like using these extra frames, as you guys know by now, um, because you totally get to make an extra card out of it and I don't know that it would um you wouldn't have you definitely wouldn't have as many cards without doing some sort of a trick with these frames and I know that we've done it before in a I know that we've done it before using the actual frame uh that you pop out um but this it's kind of a different way to make that deco large last and stretch. Um, I do put a little square on the insides of each of these corners just because they need that extra support. Good job, Pam. Texas by summer, huh? It's always crazy buying and selling. We're going to be going through that same process sooner or later. Sooner, probably, than later. Which I have mixed feelings about. <laughs> Um, 
Well, in some ways, I think that it will be great and wonderful for our family in general and other things and other times. I think about how long it took me to get the kitchen back into order after the flood in the wall. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> giving up what you finally have gotten back together. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. But it's nothing that, um, like I said, I think that for our family, it would, it's a better, it's a better choice to move because we'll have the opportunity to help my parents out. Um, my mom really loves to be in the country and has lived in the country for a very long time. Um, years and years and years on two and a half acres in California, Santa Cruz mountains where all you see is trees around you and no neighbors. Um, uh, I forgot. Oh, good. So she, um, well, they moved to Eugene to take care of my grandma. And um, they live in a little suburb building area, um, you know, where there's three types of homes in your area and they all look the same. Um, uh, okay. Got to stop talking for just long enough to make sure that I put this on the right way, not upside down, and it's not going to open. If I do it any other way, it'll blow it for me. Um, I'm gluing this down into the frame. So that again, if I were to put it all on foam squares, it would just raise it up even higher and you wouldn't have the space for being able to do, um, put it in your envelope. So that's our first card. This is with the frame around the outside and this is with the frame. All I did was, is I put the frame and butted it right up against the edge right here and then cut off the top and the side that was overhanging. So butted it here and here and then cut the extra. So it just depends on which size you want. It will fit in your five by seven envelope. It won't fit in something smaller. It's time to get closer to them. They're 40 minutes from Dallas. So I understand. So anyways, I, I have felt that Emma loves the outdoors she loves going outside she loves playing and i i think that between her and her age and the fact that i enjoyed being out uh in the yard playing as a kid and having that space i think that it is the right time for us to try and maybe go in on something together so then that way we can take care of each other and so that's what we're gonna do timeline not positive that's up in the air okay so our next card that we're gonna make is going to be this one simple quick but it sure is cute isn't it okay so for this one i'm using this piece I am using our piece that we cut that's four and a half right here. And I've got my big saying right here. Goes right down there. And let's take a look at what shapes I've got. So I went through and this one I used the two little ones right right behind my face <laughs> i use these two little ones right here for the middle of the flowers and then i used two of the cat um it is <laughs> This one, and I think 
Let's see. Should be one more. There's the little drop petal right here. Little tiny piece of petal that's falling. This kitty I used underneath um, to just give it some extra space and some build, a, build up. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had enough to build them up, but I didn't really like when I used the cat, I didn't like that half of him is gone. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, let's see, maybe, maybe save him and use the guy that's really, really gone. See, he's really gone, but he makes a great little, um, he makes a great little top to your last piece. So he's there and my last piece looks like this one. He has no tail, so it's this piece, this piece, this last piece that doesn't have a tail, and it actually works really well because then the tail shows up from the back of the card, um, and then this little piece of petal, and those are the pieces that you need for this one. So let's go ahead and make it on up. without shutting everything off the table. Okay, so I'm gonna just take this little one and he truly is just there to give us the extra height. Okay, Mary, I'm going to try your trick, I think, for the next one. Now, Mary, when you use your scotch tape, um, when you use your scotch tape, do you put it on the side that has the hunky-dory pieces? Because that's the only way that I can come up with how you do that to where it's a benefit. But you tell me, and I am ready to go. Somebody help. <laughs> I even have scotch tape because Debbie was over here doing iris folding last night for Saturday's class. I'm jumping ahead. Yes. Okay. So you take, put it on here, and then peel back your tape. I love hacks. I just love them. Mary, you are the rock star to the class this week. Thank you. Do some of them kind of fight you here and there anyways? <laughs> It took off my ones there towards the front, but not the ones further down. So maybe I'll have to fiddle with it a couple of times. But this is better than peeling all of them. I like it. I like it. Okay. I know we've talked about just barely moving it, tilting it a little bit, because then it gives it an idea that it's fuller than it is. And then we have this little kitty to build up. So there is the taxes are complete. I texted Debbie specifically on Monday and said, are the taxes done? 
and I was so excited for you guys and for me too to hear that she is ready to do classes again. <laughs> 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 Bated breath. I waited a whole nope. I wasn't even willing to wait till midnight. I think I sent her a message at 9:24. Is it done yet? <laughs> okay. And then make sure that because we are using the little um half guy, you want to build up this bottom one with an extra couple of pieces. So then that way it gives it its um, height that it needs. You can also just push it down if you wanted to, to where it's just one foamy tall so that the paw goes in a little bit. You can totally do that too. So these are my little pieces. I have my petal piece right here. This petal, I was bound and determined not to lose it when I was making the card. Um, and it tried a few times to hide from me, but it got, it, it got on the card. So that was good. It also helps that I had an extra kid at home because <laughs> at one point in time I couldn't find it. And then I found it later, you know, the couch hiding things. Okay, here's our five by seven. So I, um, when I did this piece that we already cut out, I did it and I cut the white off of the top. Um, it seemed the most useful. Yes, it is the bottom of the paper, but we're going to flip it upside down and call it good. And then this one, as you may notice, comes out a little bit shy. That's okay. We're just going to cut off a very small amount and it will still do a great job as a five by seven, just not really a five by seven. Probably more than what I should have tried to push through there. Boop, boop. I know it can handle a good amount of cutting, but I think this was just too thick. It's because of the craft style 300 GSM cardstock that we have. Whoa. I got it caught up high. Yeah, we'll have to take that apart. That's okay, I got it. Okay, 
don't want to hurt the blade, so I'm going to leave it where it's at. And then it is very easy to repair, guys. All you have to do is unscrew it and on the handle, and it comes right up. And then it is perfectly good again, like new. with the flow, right Bryce? How's your uh, blanket coming along? Very slow. <clears throat> so there is a, and I'm not kidding guys, there is a pile of yarn that I see sitting in the front living room. It's not all mine. <laughs> and all I can think is, is Debbie has like got the blanket from beyond. <laughs> And poor Bryce has a lot to crochet. <laughs> yeah, she went a little mad. As usual. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it cracked me up. I thought that it was the funniest thing. Okay. So I'm going to have to kind of put... I'm going to have to work off the board, I think, now that I've made a big mess out of it. So, hey, it will at least keep me in one place, right? Okay, so we're going to get two of our corners. We don't need them in the bottom because we're using our saying. And so there doesn't need to be, there doesn't need to be a necessity for anything at the bottom in my mind. And in fact, you may decide that you just want to put a little sticker on it and not use the big saying if you wanted to. And I just happened to grab two of the same angle corners. Hi, Kim. I peel on the card. Okay, there's my two pieces. I'm doing these long ways just because. I'm gonna elongate that a little bit. It kind of draws the eye towards the middle and the center, especially since I had to cut it a little bit smaller. It really draws to the center of the card. Um, and like I said, you can either decide that you want to use your sticker that I provided um, in with the kit. Um, I thought that it was a thinking of you. Oh, I had a get well soon on mine. And Brittany gave me a happy Mother's Day. I think I asked her for it actually, um, but I didn't have it at home. So I used a Get Well Soon sticker on one of mine. So you can either use the um, Happy Mother's Day on this card, um, or you can use it on our little A6. So it's totally your choice. But since I put this on this card, this is what I'm sticking with. Uh, I put the little frame up on foamies. And I'm going to try the scotch tape again. It did it on half of them, but then it didn't peel off the rest. So I don't know if I just wasn't patient enough. Maybe we just got a really good stick em on the funky dories this time around. On our 
side. And it took off some of the paper, but not all the paper. So I'm going to have to glue them because that will be the fastest way. And I glued the corners on so that it makes it look like it's part of the actual card piece for the bottom. And those other two corners are not being used. So if you, if you like the idea of the sticker versus the big one down here, you can totally use those extra corner pieces and fill it in down here and then put your sticker around it. So those other two corners are dibs for whoever wants it for the next card. Okay. <laughs> Everyone has done some beautiful, some beautiful cards that we've received. Emma and I have not had the opportunity to make ours yet, but I definitely want to send out those spring cards. So I believe that Hunky Dory has come out with a, not just the muddy paws for dogs, but they're coming out with a kitty one. And I believe, and I don't want to misspeak, but I believe that that's something that we're expecting here pretty soon. So this is our next five by seven. So we'll put that one away. Two down, two to go. Okie dokie. So this is going to be our European A6. And you can cut it, but you do not want to glue it because we are going to put a ribbon back and around. So we can absolutely cut the size so we know where we're going with it and it's ready to go. And because we cut it that four and a half mark, we're already there. Just a little bit of cutting. Think. No, well, I'm gonna leave it because I think that we'll be right about the right size. Okay, so last time I promised you that we were gonna do the other double ribbon and I did not make sure that we had one hanging out over here. Oh, here it is. Just way down in there. Okay. The chair is rolling away from me, Bryce. It's rolling away. Okay. So, there's some intent when you're doing a double bow. And that is, is that the one that you want to go on the back is the one that you want 
to see on the inside. So I know that that sounds odd and it doesn't make as much sense, but it really will here in just a minute um, because I want to wrap this organza up and around the top of this in just a minute. So if I want that organza to be sitting on the top by the time that I'm done, I need to put it on the back one instead of on the front one, which feels a little counterintuitive, but it does work. So we're going to go through and let's do a Let's do a three, four, three. So three times, do the same thing to the other side. Four, and four to the other side, and then three, and a three. And this is where you lock it in. Just leave it just like that for right now. Just lock it into place and let it sit there. Take the other one and put it on top. And now you're going to do the exact same thing again, except for we're going to make these just a little bit smaller. They're still three, four, threes, but they fit a little bit differently on the, excuse me, we're going to do three three in and you're going through the back side of it too so we have first off a two and then a three and then going back to that two Going back to the two. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take it and put it as if it were going up and through like you normally would. Because I'm going to kind of hold it in place. Unlatch it from this side. And then slide the bow maker out. Hi, Adeline. So I still want to keep a good snug on each of them, but now I want to take the organza and drop it through the hole with the satin. And you'll want to make sure that your satin, it, your organza is sitting on the top here in the back. Because remember I said I wanted to show that organza in, on the top of the knot. So up on top of the knot. Just like we've done other bows before. It's just using it in a different way to make the same kind of a bow. Make it nice and snug because when you get ready to pull it off, it does try and move a little bit on you. So use our tape trick on the back if you want to. So it will hold in place while you pull on your little pieces. I actually was able to make that nice and snug pretty much the first time through. So I'm not even going to play with it too much. <laughs> so if you can see from here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's got different layers of organza and satin and there's other layers of organza 
throughout. So you can pull and move these however you want them to look. And I found that I kind of felt like if I did it just right, it almost has that butterfly effect with the way that it's on there. It's almost like a little butterfly ribbon, right? So I'm going to put it up here in the corner and it seemed just really fitting because of course we've got a butterfly that the cat is looking at. So we're going to take and use a little bit of tape on the back of our paper. Find the edge. There it is. And I'll try and do it again um, at another point in time and hopefully we can show it a couple of times for you. I'll maybe my hubby and I have the next couple of days off. So maybe what we can do is, is I can have it, we'll do it at home and then send it over to Bryce who can then put it on YouTube. <laughs> or maybe I can do that. I should be able to do that. I've done it before. <laughs> he said, oh, I didn't know that I was volunteering, right? Yeah. What am I volunteering for? See, not only do you have your wife that you now volunteer for me too. <laughs> Doesn't it work like that? No, I don't think so. <laughs> There's been jokes about how I just need a pillow sometimes and I'll stay here. <laughs> yep. Well, it seems really funny because when Debbie and I do get to working at times, we will be up fairly late and so then I go home and I sleep and then I come back. So <laughs> Okay dokie. So I've wrapped my ribbon around, put it on some put it on the back with a little bit of tape to hold it down. Going to cut off the extra ribbon. I gave you extra ribbon. There's a good amount of it um, just because I knew that you may need to take it apart and try again um, with that bow. It It isn't hard. It really isn't. It's basically like doing a triple bow on each, uh, on each comb. Um, so it really is it. And then you're just tying them together. And by joining them together on that last little bit, that's what cinches it to make it look the way it does. And now I've got my nice little butterfly bow. Yay! still off from the bad cut that I accidentally made. Okay. There we go. And it's just slightly crooked on the inside. So I'm just going to fix that. And I figured by the time that we did this class, 
that we would be on to making no more Easter and on to something else. And so what better than Happy Mother's Day for a sticker? And it looks so sweet with this. So there is my Happy Mother's Day and we still have a little bit of the deco large to put on it. So we have this, nope, right there. We have this uh, flower. And we have this little kitty. Make sure that I have the right amounts here for our next card. Yeah, okay. So, this little kitty and no tail. And he does look a little bit different than my card um, because I put that other half cat. Remember I said I wasn't too thrilled about the half cat? I put the half cat here. So since I used him to build up with on that side, I just have a singular kitty to put on this side. much snow did you get snow and uh, i'll am i supposed to be checking the email roberta or is no, no, okay I like this saving time on my foamies thing for right now. I don't mind peeling them off and taking the time when it's me and it's not a big deal, but uh, I don't want you to have to watch me fight with my foamies. Don't get me wrong. They are really easy, but they are I just take a little tiny bit. Okay. A little askew. Okay, there we go. There's our sweet little, oh wait, nope, one more, one more, more, more. Little tiny butterfly. This is the perfect place for this butterfly. There's only one of them. And I thought, well, I don't want to put it on this one and I don't want to put it on that one. But by putting him here, because I only have the one sticker on here, or not one sticker, but one flower on here, by putting it up here, it actually made it look really good because it's that how your eye flows. I think that we've talked about it 
for the last few weeks that you try and do as much to a bottom as you do to the top middle um and so to have the butterfly on foamies for this one i felt that it actually drew your eye up into the happy mother's day a little bit more in my case the get well soon okay so just one more how are we doing okay i'm sorry guys i do not believe that this should take us very long. Um, I really don't. Um, easel card may look like it's something that will take a long time, but it it won't. <laughs> it just won't. Lots of people are commenting they like the butterfly Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I like to know that. It's something that somebody enjoys. I wouldn't want it to not be enjoyable. Okay, so. Okay, here's our easel card. So you've got the tops out here. They're gonna fold in to the inside like this and in to the inside like this when you're done. So first things first, I want to put my paper down, but I need my pink and my border piece. And I know that I set stuff to the side because I didn't want to lose it. I thought maybe I had still lost it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so this border turned out to be perfect. This one just really wants to stick this kit piece. I didn't have a problem with the other one, so I wonder if it just didn't get quite as punched. As well punched. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing with this, guys, is, is that I'm just going to measure for how much I need to cut off because I need to use to wrap my ribbon round. So go ahead. And this is at seven and seven eighths your sheet. In fact, I'm going to cut it at eight just to make sure. Um, these sheets should already be cut the size that you will need. Um, some people may have gotten the one with the barcode on the bottom of it, and if you did, you need to cut that away. Um, and then we know that it will go on just like so. Okay, so we're going to take this is what's holding our card into place. So we need to have some sort of a stopper on the inside. And since you see the inside of your card, the other catch is, is that you need to make it pretty. So it's not like a card where you can just write a quick note on the inside. This takes, um, you kind of have all different, I meant to ask last night, Bryce, how is Peggy? We had a card ready to send her in the next day or so, running behind. She's doing great. Yeah, Peggy is doing awesome. She um, is going to start chemo, I think, either today or tomorrow or maybe next week, but here real soon. She's going to start chemo. She'll have, I think she said three episodes of that and then they'll see how she's doing and they'll do three more and then possibly move over to radiation so she's doing very well um bird is asking for some bell a link to vellum for heat embossing um you know what that might be uh i'm at a loss it Roberta, let me um, 
Let me do a little bit of research. I know which one it is. I just can't remember the company name right off the top of my head. Okay, so I don't want to put this um, line too far from the front because if I push it too far, then these start to get shoved way up. So you want to keep it fairly close. And then because I had just a little tiny bit there, I made the decision to go ahead and take my ribbon and wrap it around. And it really actually worked really well over the top because the organza, of course, is see-through. And so I just went ahead and I did it because I could. Because <laughs> I could. Uh, I do not believe it is. I think I saw that we had card kit. We have eight in stock. Eight. So we still have our eight. Okay, so I'm just putting it around. So I put the tape on the back so that I could put this and put the ribbon forward. Um, I went ahead and I took just a little, little tiny bit of tape um, and put it across the middle section right here of my border um, just to help keep it tacked down it's going to be hidden with your little, um, with your little thinking of you round button that Hunky Dory provided us with. So it's going to hide that little bit of stick so it won't go through your organza and stick to your card. I was asking, what set is this part of? It is the um, Springtime Wishes from last year. Um, so that we do have the luxury kits it's uh still and we still have um some uh some of the three three well three piece toppers it's a deco large so it's technically one piece of cardstock and um <laughs> so it's not really a three piece it's, it's a deco <laughs> um uh and the same, it came the, the rain boots that Debbie did and the bird teapot and the wellies, rain boots, the dog, the birds with the teacups, this one, and I don't know. There's one more, but I can't remember what it is. Hey, you're lucky that I'm remembering my name today. The bunnies. Yes, the Easter bunny. Thank you. Okay, so when I went ahead and I used my my tape flags for this because I don't want to accidentally put it over the top and have it stick before I'm ready to push it down. You want to make sure that when you do this that you're doing it on right after your seam. Don't put it on your seam or your card won't close or it will bend over on top of. And then you'll have a a little bit of a messy looking card on the inside because 
you'll have bent over linen cards sitting right there if you get too high up on the seam. So by doing it the way that I did it, I now can pull from there my one from the middle. See, I put it right here, just a little tiny bit. I don't know that you can see it really well. Right here, I just did a tape flag almost, and I, or not almost, I did. Um, sometimes I'll do these with the middle ones when I need it just a certain way, but I know that I'm going to want it to stick. So you just go ahead and peel it out like you would uh, just far enough for it to reach the outside of your card. And then you can pull it and you're set. Okay. Alrighty. So from here, it's a little bit of fun. Won't be won't take us long at all from here. Um I'm not going to put the little bow that's up here at the top. Um, you can. What I did just due to time constraints today, but I will um, I will just let you know. It's just a simple 3-2-3 three, three, um, bow. And um, I put it underneath on the blue. So before I laid my blue, I put it right here. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your card that um, you have left over from the blue. It'll be the exact right amount that you're going to need. And you want to line that up and cut it in half. So you're just going to take the the two edges, one here, one here, and you want to just make a cut straight across. Um, I use my trimmer just because I don't ever trust myself with scissors and cutting a straight line. So you're literally making two blue triangles and two pink triangles. And as I mentioned before, let me just measure this really quick so that we've got it. It is exactly four. So your blue triangle will be four inches and your pink triangle will be four inches. And they're already cut to the size that you need unless you are one of the people that ended up with the bottom of the paper. And if you did, then all you need to do is cut off that trim and then you'll have the exact right size. Okay. So what I tried to do in the thinking through the process, when I had my cat up, I wanna kind of hide that wall piece from the kitty cat. Um, it, I tried to make it so that it kind of looks like wallpaper almost here. And then when you push it on up, it disappears. And then in this side, because the can is blue, um, it gets hidden. And so I didn't want the flowers to blend in here. Um, so I had it up on blue. And then by having the blue down here with this opposite, if you decide that this is too busy, because um, everybody has their own taste in what they like and what they don't, and I only have my taste, so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there, you can use the opposite side of your pink. Where did the other section of it go? You can use the opposite side of your pink and it's a much more muted pink. Okay. So from here, I'm just putting them on. Okay. 
And again, you want to butt them up to the seam, but you don't want it to butt up so closely that you don't have the ability to bend because it's going to need to bend. So I ran my tape a little bit further down from the seam on each side. And then I ran, a, so you can see here, I've got my two tapes on this side. And then I just ran an edge from here to here. It seems odd when you're doing it, but it really does make a lot of sense. You're just holding your paper in place and you don't want it to bow. Uh, and because we're moving it and we've got seams, we want to make sure that we've got a good solid foundation for each triangle. So think of it as taping two triangles, because that's exactly what you're doing. And then we just smoosh them together. And by using your finger lift tape for your line, you won't accidentally run into getting that tape into the seam where it doesn't want to be. Mary says, this card is one of the prettiest. The way you cut the double tape easel is clever. I tried. I had to, <laughs> and I really did, because it's really tough for me uh, to think of the card being on its side like that, because what happens? They open up the card and they're like, okay, I have this card that is upside down, or I don't know how to look at it. So it, it throws me when I'm first looking at it. So I think, well, if I can make it pretty on each side, so somebody opens it and voila, it opens like this, then look, it's right side up. And then look, it's right side up. So it gives you that. <laughs> so I tried to give it a little bit of trick of the eye. Just playing tricks. But thank you for the compliment. And now I've got tape everywhere. And it's grabbing some of it. Okay. Man, that did not want to come off, did it? Me and tape today. Wow. I have no clue. <laughs> it's there. It pops off, but it wanted to rip on top of it, even with the ripping it in the middle trick. Okay, so I just want to do one section of my triangles at a time. So just take off the one set. So this particular one is going to go here. You've got plenty of play with that um, seam. So just put it just slightly back from the seam. And again, because we didn't put that finger lift tape right on top of the seam, it will make it easier. It will make it easier um, when it comes time to open and close it. If you put it over the seam and you don't do it on each side of the triangle, then it will stick and you will have a tougher time for it to sit smoothly. So 
then I'm just taking it and I'm butting it right up against the other one. But because it's not glued at the seam, you shouldn't have a bending problem. And then the other side just gets the opposite. So if this is your front, pink here, blue here, blue here, pink here. Unless you don't like it that way, and then you can totally have just tons of fun with it. And you can have all blue. Nope, didn't, didn't give you enough for all blue. You could have three quarters pink. <laughs> If you are a symmetrical, you want it all the time, you can always go with two blues on the bottom and one on the top. And if for some reason you put the wrong one on the wrong side, the good news is, is that you can just switch your sides around if you want to and put the pot on the It would be good if I put it up linen side up. Um, if you sorry guys, having a lining up. There we go. <laughs> Look, I just did it. I did exactly what I said that I wasn't going to do. That's okay. We're going to go with it because it's stuck now. <laughs> that might be why I was having trouble lining it up. It, it doesn't seem to. Uh, we live in a pretty, humid area. we live in a, not pretty, it's a very humid area. Um, and we, contrary to what people think, we do have warmer summers too. Um, so I haven't seen it respond in a way that it, it warps due to moisture or um humidity is is huge here um you guys use it so much that it's not like old tapering it's yeah like it's a chance to get too humid uh i have i have my stockpile at home and um uh i don't go through it as fast as debbie does by any means so i have I have a good a good amount that um, I still have that it doesn't it's not affected by it. Um, so no, I have not seen that. Okay. So because I put it on the wrong corner, I'm gonna have to trim a little tiny seam out of here because it's white. Okay, so from here, let's see, we've got our kitties.
since I accidentally put the blue on the wrong side, no, I still want it this way. Okay. Okay, if you notice right here, it's tall up on top, and that's quite all right. I literally butted it all the way down as far as I could down here on the blue side. Um, and then I just clipped that section off of the top. If you feel like you wanna leave it on because you're not gonna put it in an envelope, something like that, you can. Um, but otherwise, it was really easy to just come in here and snip along that area and then I just put it in at a different place. Well, unless you lose it. <laughs> How could it disappear? I just cut it. <laughs> Those tricky, tricky things. Okay. So from here, I'm just going to be gluing him straight down. Um, him, her, cat, it. There's one half of the kitty. And the other half of the kitty is on this side of the pail. So as you can see, we use every single little bit that we got. So I went through and I cut it up through the singular little by the petal and then down and around. And then I clip right above the ear and the flowers. Then just trim him on up. And I call him a him, but it could be a her. But it could be a him. You never know. See, I just cut him out just like that. And so now he can just come and be a secondary piece to give you that 3D effect. And then your flower pot that I've just cut out, you're just gonna want to go through and make it look like a pot again. So I'm gonna round it out. Take those little guys off. and use my flower punch right here. And so now <clears throat> I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna glue this one down. Wrong way. I'm gonna glue this one down this way. And then you can really see by having the blue not 
by me accidentally putting the blue on the bottom and not the top, it definitely does make it to where that blends into the background. So hopefully you caught that we should do it probably differently in the next time around. Okay. Something else that I want to make sure that I say is, is that you do not want to attach it to the top section. So make sure that you keep them both. Um, oh, she had been. <laughs> um, she'd already been on earlier. Uh, she probably, yeah, she probably, knowing my dad likes. I don't know that dad necessarily likes to eat at a certain time, but I, I know that they tend to stick to a closer eating schedule than we do. And I am going to make this look even fuller than it would normally by really twisting this. And I wanna make sure that I get one more little foamy in there. And let's foam this guy in, this little guy. Good night. Bob was out with his kitty earlier today. He brought him out and was sitting on the swing and they were they were enjoying the rain because that's what it's doing today. Uh, Roberta, I think uh, give me a little bit and um, I'll email you with the right vellum that you can heat emboss off of it's the same one that we used for the fairy hugs um and i apologize because i can't think of the brand name right off the top of my head if debbie was here she would be able to do that for you it might be okay so then the last little thing that we have to put on is this thinking of you to help hold the easel card up. And we've used all of our pieces and parts. And you want to do it on a foamy because it will just help with that extra hold for your easel. It can stop it from popping back out maybe sometimes, I should say, not maybe. Sometimes when you do an easel card, uh, if you if you get them a little stiff, you'll need this to help be a catch for it because it will want to slide forward. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Guys, you've got some really great sticky foamies this time in your kit. Or maybe this is just my foamies. <laughs> That could be it too. Okay, so the last thing to add on here. So see if it's if you have a stiff stiffer, you may end up needing to use this as your stopper and have to 
put it up on the foam squares in order to keep it. If you have the maneuverability by having these two separate pieces of triangles on there um, and not trying to bend it over the seams or force it onto the seams, then you will not have as much trouble. So um, this little guy looked bare and the cat's looking at nobody. That was my opinion anyways when I'm looking at this. I mean, isn't it so, so, so cute? So what I did was is I took one and you have this included in your kit. You can't get them any other way um, because Hunky Dory made these um, little butterflies for embellishments uh, a long time ago. I don't know exactly. Uh, but um, but uh, with this, <clears throat> I'm going to show you both directions that I took this or both directions that I'd wanted to take this. So I asked Brittany to put two in mine because there is, there are two ways of doing this. There was plenty of leftover Miri and you can just glue, not leftover Miri, uh, leftover bubble gum. And you can use your Sharpie to draw a line. You don't even have to use a line. Um, I made a line in mine right here. And then you just curve the petals, the petals, curve the wings. Um, and I clipped into the butterfly where the line would be. Um, and I just bent him up and around. So you can do it with the bubble gum. Um, but I wanted to do something since uh, Debbie's been playing around a lot. Since she's been playing a lot with the Jamie Sparkles and the Acetate, I thought, how much fun would it be if we used Acetate for the wings? And I'm actually going to use the one that she ran her paste uh, through a stencil because it's going to give you a different pattern. See, you'd have, you'll have a pattern through your paper. And by doing that, it should make it look like a butterfly wing. At least that's my opinion. So let's give it a try and see what happens. I think And then I just went through and I cut, I'm going to move this little guy. I just went through and I'm, and I cut right along the outer edge of the butterfly. And then you can decide how much you want to leave or take, but this gave me the outline. And it also helps highlight it against the background. And that's what we, that's what I used for the filler. Because the pot looks too bare all by himself and the cat looked like he was looking at nothing. <laughs> Cause we didn't have a butterfly. Cause I used it on the little sweet A6 card. So last night, I listed some items so that you guys could 
um, have access to a few different things that we got in yesterday. Um, and Debbie uh, made up Saturday's class. So I'll be able to show you what she's got set up for Saturday. I glue the outer edge of the butterfly to the acetate. And because it's going to have to dry a little bit, I'm not going to be able to bend the wings quite yet, but you should be able to get the general idea. Oh, that's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. Um, I don't know that it's going to stick quite yet, but we'll give it a good college try. Wait, crafts, college, no. It's still a college try. Still a college try? Well, that's good. Apparently putting on a lid, though, is <laughs> difficult stuff. Look at that butterfly. Ooh. Yay! Look at that, guys. So if you have some of your Jamie Sparkles hanging around and that you made over the last couple weeks, or if you haven't had a chance to play with these, um, you can use these for so many different things. You really can. Um, I would feel better, honestly, if I had some of my clear foamies handy. I know that we've got some over in the drawer over there, but I'm going to add a foamy onto each side just to give it a little bit more support uh, because it is it is one of those things that could because it is the acetate, it's going to be a little bit more slick. So it may be less likely to stick to the card. Um, but if you get the clear foamies, you won't be able to see anything. It's just a nice little stick uh, and it's super tacky. Um, not looking, tacky glue. Um, so anyways, uh, if you haven't had a chance to even play with the Jamie Sparkles, I do know that we have some um, kits still left over from last year of J Jamie Sparkles. Um, I don't want to misspeak, but I'm pretty positive that we have at least two or three. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to watch one of her videos where she does the Jamie Sparkles with the paste, especially, this is the one that she's doing with the texture paste and the sprinkles through a stencil. Um, and you can do it as other, other ways as well. It's just amazing to me. So, uh, whenever I have the chance to be able to do some of those, and since she had some handy, I'm taking some for this little butterfly and didn't he look sweet? So you've got your butterfly and your little kitty cats and we are done. Let me show you what's for Saturday. Um, let me clear this stuff out of the way. So we have the spring version of Irish, Irish. Why did I even say that? Spring green must have been in my brain. Um, <laughs> Iris folding. So this is the Iris folding. Um, we've done the Debbie's done the Christmas version, and this is the spring or spring year, summer year. It's a Margie word. That's what my husband calls them. Anyways, <laughs> this one is a leaf, uh, leaf fern. 
you could also make that into a feather. So you've got two different options there. We've got our little butterfly. Bird. Bird. Man. <laughs> Woo! I'm done. My brain. It, it It's done. Okay. Uh, we've got our little bird that's just because. Jar full of love. I don't know if that's what Debbie's calling it, but that's what I'm calling it. And here, I think this looks like a poppy because of the way that she's created the little uh, individualized little pieces of chunky glitter in there. Um, she's done dots. Yeah, there is. Um, so we've got a little bit of glimmer paper in this, some regular pieces of um, paper folded in. And so we've got these. Um, that will be for Saturday's class. Um, I'm putting the kits together right now. So I just have a couple of little things to finish up there. Um, next Thursday is this kit. It's going to be um, a work along just like what we had or what Debbie had done with um, the last work along from heartfelt creation so she'll be doing it with you and um creating it then versus beforehand so we don't have as many examples to be able to show of this um because we only have so many of them and we want to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to, to get them um and then the next saturday so not this coming saturday but the next saturday so you know what this means right guys you can buy the kits and um work along you'll you should definitely get your kits by next thursday and saturday um so we have this beautiful kit that was put together by graphics 45. it has we're blurry again um I can't show it as well, can I? Oh, here we go. There we go. I just won't move as fast. Um, so we have the Infura, Infura um, papers. There's all different prints, butterflies. I could have stolen from that, huh? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, there's nine inner stair step cards with envelopes in your packet. There's also going to be three five by sevens that we dropped in as some extra pieces so that we can do that, which means that you've got some in, inner stipper cards left over. Uh, here's our graphics 45 cottage life paper. It is so pretty. It is so pretty. Um, and uh, hopefully, she will be out to join me. And I think that she was going to shoot for trying to do some of this this evening um, while we're working. So Shh. aren't these so pretty? Lauren's coming to check because she's hungry. I always know. I always know. Lauren's come in. Say hi to Lauren, everyone. She's come in to check to see if we're near done. I promise we are. You get a uh, examples sheet um, and different ways to use your stair, uh, your inner stair cards. The nine that are here, we're, she's going to do three five by sevens and I believe three of the inner steps. So these are some other examples that you can use. Um, and then you get your chipboard. So those are your classes for the next three. So you guys are all set, and I'm glad to pass off uh, uh, Debbie's torch back to you, Debbie, and um, you are totally great at what you do. Um, so thank you very much, guys, for putting up with me for the last uh, few weeks, and I hope that you have a great rest of your evening. Enjoy, and we'll see you later.